Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. So uh, what we're doing is very impromptu, as Cindy was on a personal call with a friend that you guys, if you've watched this video, then you know her. Her name is Dawn. And Dawn had shared her story over here on Heart's Home. It's a Christian's near-death experience that changed her life forever. And, you know, the reality is at this point in time, I, I, we know Dawn, she would say she's spiritual, non-religious after this experience. Um, a great, great, uh, amazing story to share. So please do, if you haven't watched this yet, please do uh, go over and watch this. But we we're talking about something very, very different because Dawn has... Uh, gone through some education of her own in order to inform herself more about something that I think is a extremely a important, and that's patient advocacy. Patient advocacy. Patients, you know, speaking up, asking questions, not listening blindly, uh, but question what the authorities say. And I think we need to do that in more ways than one, obviously. Be your best own advocate. This means getting to understand things that often can be very, very confusing for people. And we have Dawn here. Here's Dawn. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it so much. And um, yes, I'm, I'm very much a, a person that believes in patient ad advocacy. And if somebody is not able to advocate for themselves, to have a family member, a close friend, <clears throat> excuse me, or something, you know, a person that will actually speak up for them when needed. And especially now at this, um, this time in our world where we are dealing with so many things, it is important to have somebody that can speak up. But I do encourage people to advocate for themselves. And part of that is to educate yourself on whatever it is that you are dealing with right mm -hmm. it it is and i i was wondering if you could share um a little bit about why you became such an advocate for yourself and for your children and what kind of situations were you put in and how how did you advocate for yourself because no one really educates us or spells it out when we're going through the system it's just sort of people put a halter on you and you're just sort of led through the system and you think you have to comply with every little thing like what inklings did you have that made you say hey no i gotta back out of this doctor or i have to say something uh, if you could if you could share some of that sure absolutely um one of the things well the big thing that led to um this whole this whole awakening i guess you could say was dealing with a very complicated and miserable thyroid condition that was missed for over 21 years um it all started after i had my first child in in 1983 and had a lot of very difficult symptoms it was all thyroid related, but didn't know it for 20 years. So for 20 years, I suffered and just basically did everything that the doctors told me. I, I ended up having um, an irregular heartbeat and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, you know, is, is there something wrong with my heart? And so I go to the doctor and they do say, well, yes, you're having premature ventricular contractions. And of course, my question is, well, wh why am I having that? Oh, well, we don't know. We don't know why you're having that. Well, can we find out why I'm having that? Yeah, we'll do. We'll do a bunch of blood tests and we'll, you know, we'll look at you and so on and so forth. And they did. And in passing, one of the cardiologists that I was working for or working with, um, he told me, he said, well, you know, your blood tests, your thyroid levels are a little off. But he said, we're going to make sure your heart's okay. And I'm thinking, I'm 26 years old at the time. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm 26. I've been, I've had, you know, I've been kind of athletic in my past. I was a gymnast, you know, in high school. And I was part of a ballet company. And, you know, it's like, I'm, I, I don't think it's my heart. I don't feel like it's my heart. 
And when he said, your thyroid levels are a little off, and then he finished up with, but we're going to make sure that your heart's okay. And they did. Every cardiac test known to man is what I went through. And when I went in for my final appointment, he said, well, um, well, um, well, uh, uh, we didn't find anything wrong with your heart. And a voice in my head said, of course he didn't, because it's not your heart. And I said, well, then what, what is it? And he said, well, we're going to call it a benign electromechanical cardiac dysfunction. And I said, so what does that mean for me? He said, well, we're going to put you on a beta blocker to slow your heart rate so that you don't throw these uh, premature ventricular contractions. We're going to give you a prescription for uh, Xanax to help with the, the anxiety that you're feeling. And here's a card to one of the leading psychologists in Kaiser Santa Clara so that you can work out whatever is causing the anxiety. And I left that appointment feeling like, oh my gosh, now I've got to, you know, I've got to navigate this path. Um, and it was the wrong path. It was wrong. And I suffered horribly because of it. Um, he told me, he said, you're probably just going to have to learn to live with it. Take the beta blockers, take the Xanax, you know, see the psychologist, blah, blah, blah. And, and I did. I did do that for a while. But after a few months, I weaned myself off because I didn't feel well taking, taking all those drugs. Um, turns out it was a thyroid issue, but they didn't pursue it. And when I had the conversation with him, I wanted to say, well, you know what? Let's pursue the thyroid. Let's let's try that and see if that all pans out. But I didn't do it. Um, if it happened to me now, I would definitely. If, if, if I had to go back and relive that, I would definitely say something now and say, well, then you need to pursue the thyroid as well. Unfortunately, I think that that happens with a lot of people. The doctors, they go in. And a lot of times, because we haven't educated ourselves, we don't know the right questions to ask. And the only way that we can do that is to broaden our own perspective and our own information so that when they say, this is this or this is this, we can say, well, why is that? Well, did you do this test? Did you look at this, this thing? Um, the other thing that I, that I want to say, too, is that doctors are not a lot different than somebody that we hire to build a deck on our house or do a room addition there's somebody that we are paying we may not be paying them out of our pocket but we're paying them through our insurance if we have insurance or we're paying them out of our pocket either way if they're being hired by us to perform their job and they're not doing a good job we can ask for a new one any hospital has to honor that request if we get into emergency and say, and they they say oh well, we're going to look at this and this and this if it doesn't feel comfortable if it doesn't feel right if the doctor doesn't feel competent we can say can you please get me another doctor because i don't want you treating me and they have to honor it it's part of the patient's bill of rights in the medical community Mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. it's something that we just need to start asking for yeah yes I, I think that is such a beautiful example and and something very special about Donna is she's, she's very extremely psychic so she was able to like go back in her life and pick up these inklings and say well this is what I should have done because I heard the voice I, I felt the thing but I didn't and then the other thing is don't put these doctors on a pedestal they are educated just like anyone else. Yes, they're educated in an exceptional way. However, the information that they have is so limited and it just comes from the Rockefeller Foundation and it doesn't go any further beyond that, which makes it even more critical that we are our own doctor. Yes, ab absolutely. You know, and, and I've had so many um, conversations with people that have gone through all sorts of issues with what really boils down to medical malpractice in so many ways um, you know friends family members uh, members of the channel in different ways 
that have gone through um, you know horrible things even losing loved ones when you know they made the wrong choice they didn't ask the right question and you know at this time in 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 place where we are in the world boy you got to ask questions and so you um, you know you you heard that voice and ever since you had that NDE um, you know the intuition and the understanding that you can listen to your guides and you know those that are of a fundamentalist mindset which again I really look at the medical system and and the religious and the political systems as being so much the same thing uh, they're all so dogmatic in in so many ways and so controlling uh, so it's really awakening to the fact that you know those three systems have an awful lot in common but you were able to hear that voice and if maybe you listened to it and trusted in it a little bit more at that time things would have worked out differently it, I, I believe that's true I really do um, I, I, I heard something recently and I can't remember who said it but the bottom line was when we're born we're already connected to source we have an innate connection to source when we're born and i think we forget that because once we for me it was getting into parochial school i had to go to catholic school and you know go down that whole fundamentalist dogmatic route which i you know ended up staying in way too long um but we have a connection to source from the from the moment we're born before we're born it's 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 already intact if we listen if we learn to listen to that voice it will help us navigate some of these places where it's it's we're not maybe not getting the right care from a doctor or maybe we're not being told the right thing from the pulpit in the church there were so many times when I would sit in church and I would hear something and that voice would come through and say, that's not correct, that's a lie, that's fabricated. And I would hear this and I would think, but no, 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 this is the right thing. This is going to church. This is trying to, you know, be the good person and, and do the right thing. But it never stopped. And when it, when it really came through loud and clear and I finally said, I'm going to be listening to this more and more. And that's when I began to really step away from anything fundamental and dogmatic was when they finally discovered the big problem with my thyroid. They'd already treated it. They knew I had a thyroid problem. But, and that was in 2004. And then in 2009, I was in my car. I was heading down I was heading down to Sacramento for my daughter's wedding and a voice not audible might have been it should have been audible because it was so clear came through and said to me you're going to be in an accident today I'm like I kind of just left it off and I said no I'm not I'm a, I'm a good driver I'm careful I'm not going to be in an accident and then about a mile later here comes the voice again you're going to be in an accident today and it's going to be unavoidable and I thought, huh, that's really curious. And so I kept going and I got to a place where there was a, a sign, it was one of those blinking signs and it said, oh, that there's an accident at the next exit, use caution. And I laughingly said out loud, I said, see, it wasn't me. And I kind of chuckled and I thought, well, okay, I'll be extra careful. So I'm in the middle lane of a freeway and we're going at stop and go because of this accident further up ahead. And all of a sudden we came to an abrupt stop. The car behind me was still accelerating and hit my car so hard that it broke the seat in my car. And I thought, oh my gosh, it just happened. That just happened and it just came true. And so, long story short, I ended up getting down to my daughter's wedding. A family member took me down, and my back hurt because they did hit me really hard. Her soon-to-be mom-in-law was a nurse, and she had some ibuprofen. I took that. I felt a little bit better. The next morning, I woke up, and my back was hurting even more. I thought, well, darn, maybe I 
actually injured something. So I went to emergency. I'm in emergency. They do a, they do a CT scan. They do an X-ray. And the doctor comes in and he said, your back is not injured, which is the good news. I said, okay. And he said, but you have a mass, an enormous mass in your chest. I said, in my chest? He said, yes. I said, what is it? He goes, we don't know. Oh, we don't know. And he's scurrying out of the room. And he said, but we're going to do another CAT scan. And I go, okay. They did. And they found out that my thyroid gland was now a goiter that was the size of a grapefruit. It was collapsing my aorta and collapsing my trachea. And he said, this is literally killing you right now. He said, you have to see a surgeon. He said, if you were to arrest, they would not be able to get a tube deep enough in your trachea because this is so deep. It's up, it's right where your heart is. And it kind of chokes me up because had I listened to my voice, the years before when they were doing all the cardiac tests and they said in passing, oh, you know, your thyroid levels are off, you have a little bit of a problem, but we're going to pursue your heart. If I had spoken up then, I maybe have, would have been able to avoid going through the surgery that I went through because it was a horrific surgery. They had to do a sternal split and it was extremely difficult to recover from. So I am very much an advocate of listening to the voice. Now, when I was in church, they would tell me anything like that, anything supernatural, hearing hearing that voice or having any kind of supernatural type of activity happen in your life, that's all of the devil or it's a demon is mm -hmm. what they would tell me. So, yes, I, I do very much advocate for people to listen to the voice inside of them, to listen to their guides, to listen to source directly, and not just automatically believe what's being told from the pulpit, and not automatically to believe what's being told by a doctor. We have to advocate for ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, you know, thank you uh, for sharing that. I mean... You've been through so much in your life, but then at this point in life, um, you know, you're a real blessing and, and, and we're happy to share your story with everybody because, you know, again, through trauma, we learn and then we share what we've learned and we hopefully can help others to avoid these uh, decisions and, you know, decisions which may be just simply not saying a word when you should speak up and question things because you know there are so many people out there right now that wish that they didn't blindly trust and you know wish they could just take that back and and do it all again um in some ways you know you could say this might have been your higher self putting you through all this so that you could affect um you know hundreds or thousands of people in a positive way where maybe they'll avoid this mm -hmm. Right, yes, right. Exactly. And what what I really love um, about Dawn and the way she explains things is she gives such a clear contrast between, see, this is a, a dogma and do you see why the dogma is dangerous? Because right. they, she, had she listened to the church, she wouldn't listen to herself at all. And that could have killed her. It literally could have killed her. So this is why I really appreciate Dawn coming on when she does. And I still see that Dawn playlist. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And um, also, you did start to go the route of being a nurse and, and you started to work in an office. And then we're kind of like, wow, this is not really what I thought it was going to be. So you changed your mind. I did. I did. I had to. It didn't it didn't feel right. Um, I was extremely interested in the whole back office type of, of, of working with patients and I was very drawn to wanting to be possibly a surgical nurse and after working in a doctor's office, I, it, it was a feeling of there's something not right. It, was, it wasn't like Oh, I don't even know how to describe it. It wasn't like being a healer. It was like they were 
treating the symptoms, but maybe not finding the cause. Mm -hmm. And that really bothered me. I did want to, I did, I had wanted to go into medicine. It was something I was, I was really drawn to. I ended up becoming a birth educator and a doula. Um, I taught birth classes to a lot of people and I would assist moms in labor and I would always give them the contrast between this is what to expect from the medical community, this is what to expect from yourself, this is what you want to do to advocate for yourself. And I ended up spending a lot of time in labor rooms with moms that um, had written a birth plan that I helped them write so that they could get exactly the kind of care and treatment that they wanted, not necessarily what the doctor thought that Mm -hmm. they should do. Of course, there's always the contrast. Is it good to labor and deliver in a hospital? Yes, because, you know, there are complications sometimes, but it's not the norm. Mm -hmm. So that's been kind of my approach. Um, I, I, I very much, I very much want people to advocate for themselves in, in those realms. Absolutely. I remember way back when, when I left the Catholic Church as an adult in my early 20s and went to a a regular non-denominational church and the first time I went to a study and we're reading through the Bible and I'm picking up all these things this doesn't sound right this doesn't sound right and I questioned it in in the group I said well wait a minute this doesn't sound right this doesn't and and I was feeling it on, on the inside as well there was there was a check in me that was saying no that's written but it's not correct and as soon as I said that boy I was just lambasted like how dare you that's don't be a heretic you know and they went off on don't you dare question what's written in the Bible Mm -hmm. and it really was over dramatic with what was done but I've seen it done to other people too and that's not right and I just I do. I advocate for listening to self very much. We're connected to source. Source can speak through us. A mm-hmm. spor- source can speak <clears throat> to us mm-hmm. about ourself. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. we all need to Ab- absolutely. That. We we don't need a middleman, but middlemen uh, are what's controlling this world. And yes. you know whether it's political, whether it's medical, or whether it's religious. It's all one system is is the big thing, and doesn't mean that there wasn't a Yeshua because there was a Yeshua, and, and you agree. I know you agree with that too, and you feel Absolutely. very connected to Yeshua. Yes, very much so. Very yes, and he's he's awesome. Oh my gosh, he is so awesome. When I saw him on the other side, it was it was it was the highlight of my life. It was just amazing, and so much of what we put ourselves through here in this world with the the political system with the medical system with the religious system all of that is it's all man manipulated is what it is and it's it's not it's it's not what it's about and i really believe that when yeshua was here in body that's what he was trying to get people to look at Mm -hmm. but they you know they manipulated it and it's what we have now and it's just it's not right no after after he's no longer here they change the story and they make it one that they can utilize to their advantage exactly mm-hmm. but again doesn't negate the fact that he was a rebel and a systems buster and he would be speaking up right now saying exactly what you're saying and exactly what we're saying mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. absolutely i believe that 100 percent well, thank you so much, John, Don, for sharing this. And I know we, we have other topics we could touch on in the future if you ever feel like it. Oh, I'm, I would be more than happy to. Um, I just think that the work that you and Cindy do is so special and it's so informative. And just love you guys to death. I am so thankful. Well, we love you too. As always, guys, source bless and namaste. Namaste.